Hello everyone. Today we will talk about basics of modern programming, object-oriented programming. Let's begin. There is a technology that allows us to build big software systems by combining smaller pieces of code. The idea of object-oriented programming, commonly abbreviated as OOP, is the heart of modern programming. Here's a little story. When I watched with my son a cartoon called, Pat and Matt, he asked me, Papa, what are they doing? I have answered, they try to repair their roof, and then I looked at my son and told him, this isn't too smart. What they do is just towing on the roof without a ladder, they just improvise without any plan, and we still watch how they fail and fail again until they finally find a ladder and tools to repair their roof. In the end, I said, you can't do things when you can't find anything. I hope you have already cleaned your room. You can't guess where some tools are or how to use them. You should know where a piece is and organize them. That's the reason to use object-oriented programming. In that structure, the object is a noun, such as a hammer that collects properties. It is also an adjective, referring to a kind of hammer and methods. It is a verb that tells what it can do, like picking up. Of course, a hammer is a tool, so we also have a hierarchy with an abstract object such as tool because a tool without defining what kind of tool it is, gives us no information. Why should we care? Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm that was used to develop high-level languages such as Java. Object-oriented programming breaks up a program into objects, similar to software packages, where the different methods of an object interact with other objects in the program. Objects can also inherit from other objects, making them more powerful and capable of performing specific tasks. For a language to be considered object-oriented, it must implement encapsulation of data and code for an object. What does it mean? Object-oriented programming is the process of using methods to create classes that are used to produce applications. This methodology has seen a surge in usage due to its popularity among developers and the rise of more complex programming languages like Java, C++, and Python. OOP has many benefits over traditional procedural programming, including easier reading of code, less repetitive coding, and smaller code size with one class used instead of several functions. Here's an example. In object-oriented programming, a class is a set of related data and the operations that work with that data. An example of a class would be a person, class. That could be defined as employee, employer, or client. In that situation, we make a hierarchy, where one object extends another with all properties and methods. Properties could be a title, first name, last name, etc., and methods are registered. It's important to define your object in the right class. How to use it? To use objects in programming, you need to think about categorizing resources that your code will manage. There is no clear answer for that. However, try not to define your object too broad. Otherwise, you will get the file with a few thousand lines. Good luck with finding a problem there. Also, try to avoid making a God object that's an object that can do everything, which makes it very difficult to identify. Instead, place where there could be a potential problem or somewhere that needs to improve a function. In conclusion, the main idea of OOP is to make a program easier to debug and modify. It includes separating the code into small chunks known as objects. Objects have a simple interface that only does one thing, which means they can be replaced if something goes wrong. In what other aspects of life do you see objectivity conventions? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.